Good evening. I'd like to call the Bonita Springs Fire Control and Rescue District meeting, a board meeting for September 8, 2014 to order. Please rise for a moment of silence for the families of the fire, five firefighters that died during the month of August and then followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. get started this evening I would like to thank everybody for the support and the visitation and um, for the crisis that my family are facing with my son I would like to thank everybody for personally for all the support uh, first thought order of business um, is administrative approval of regular board minutes for August 11 2014 I make a motion the board minutes be approved thank you all in favor? Aye. Aye. I need an acknowledgement of the budget workshop notes from August 18th, 2014. I make a motion that we acknowledge the workshop notes. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 One motion for the financials, August 2014 and current expenditures, the acknowledgement of August 2014 financial report, acknowledgement of wire transfers and transfers between accounts. I make a motion to accept. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I need a motion for the budget transfer number two, 2013-2014. Chairman, yes. uh, we have to uh, ask for public input on this item. Is there any public input on this item? No. I thought that was the transfer. That's for the transfer. It's for the transfer. Not the no, it's just for the transfer of funds. Not the budget itself. That's separate. That's on a separate agenda. Uh, motion for that? I make a motion the budget transfer be approved. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, now we have the tentative budget hearing um, on a separate agenda, and uh, Commissioner Conforti will read that into the record, please. This hearing is to adopt a tentative millage and budget for the 2014-2015. The tentative millage of 2.3800 per thousand dollars will be 5.41% more than the rollback rate of 2.2578 mills. The total ad valorem taxes generated from the millage of 2.3800 will be 19,396,295 dollars. Net of taxes is 18,801,236 dollars. The tentative budget for 2014-2015 will be 27,616,742 dollars. The tentative impact fee budget for 2014-15 will be $483,397. Do we have any input on the millage rate or the budget submitted for 2014-15? Mr. Grant, you may come up now. Uh, yes, uh, Alex Grant, 11851 East Terry Street, uh, Benita. Uh, I, this is uh, page number four, uh, and this would be line item 522-01-122, longevity. Uh, in the budget proposed is 368,526 dollars and 76 cents. Now, uh, back uh, in, uh, just from historic perspective, back
back in the year uh, 1998. I believe that figure was uh, $44,653. And in the 1999, it was uh, uh, $62,782.08. Uh, now, that was when the total uh, uh, regular salaries were between $2 million uh, and sixty-one uh, in uh, 1998 and $2,215,000 in 1999 in their final budgets. Now, this year's final budget, I believe, is six million nine hundred and sixty hundred and thirty-five thousand. Uh, the question I have is, uh, you had the longevity for uh, at least 15 years or before, I don't know which, but, uh, I wanted to know if uh, why there was sort of a higher percentage than you had before in, in, in the 90s, uh, you know, 15 years ago or so. Uh, that was number one. And uh, uh, we had at that time, I believe, uh, if uh, memory serves me correctly, an actual force of 47,000, uh, not 47,000, 47 frontline firefighters on duty at that time. I, what we have now, around 74, 75 or so, more or less, some, so something around there. Okay, so I wanted to know uh, if any other uh, departments in Southwest Florida have uh, the, these longevity uh, thing. Uh, Thank you, Alex. And, and, and who were they? Thank you. Somebody from the church. I have no more cards for public input. Does anybody else have anything to say? We can move on. Adopt. The tentative millage approved the millage rate, uh, rate of 2.3800. We need a motion for that. I make a motion to go with two, the 2.38. Well, I'm sorry, I did it with my name. 2.3800. tentative budget. And a second. Millage line. All in favor? Aye. 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 I understand we need public comment item no so because I think the public um, according to what it says there it was public input on the millage rate or the budget submitted I think that covered both oh. we need to adopt the tentative budget of 27 million six hundred sixteen thousand seven hundred forty two dollars for the fiscal year 2014 2015 we need a motion for that I'll make that motion I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Adopt tentative impact fee budget of $483,397 for the fiscal year 2014-2015. We need a motion for that. I'll make a motion for that. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 That should conclude the budget hearing. Thank you. Okay, um, old business. Anybody have old business? Um, uh, apparently we have old business because of an email that we received today and at the last meeting uh, there was some discussion about uh, um, Chief Giuliano, and today we received a letter from a law firm, cease and desist, and I think um, from the way I read this, it 
the only thing we have to address as a board is how this affects the board. It, the rest of this is between Chief Giuliano and Commissioner Fitzgerald. Um, but if everybody's read this over, um, I don't know if there's any comments or what we can do as a board, um, but it needs to be addressed. Uh, may I comment? Sure. Yes. I believe this is not connecting business. This is a, an issue, a personal issue uh, between the commissioner and the chief, and it's, it's not the uh, business of the commission. Well, I, I agree with you, except for one line in the email that um, it included it included the members of the board of commissioners and for whatever purpose I'm guessing that we have to run this by Terry Lewis but I don't think this has anything to do with the commission but there was a there was one sentence in there that included the district um, in this cease and desist order so I just felt that we should bring it to to a public meeting and at least be aware that um, I don't think, and I don't know this, I'm not an attorney, but I don't think that there's any liability for the district, but the fact that in this email it um, insinuated that the district could be part of this action and uh, I just wanna make sure that the district is protected and we need to get a consensus to at least run it by Terry Lewis, our attorney, to make sure that, that the district is in any way liable for this and this is personal between the two individuals involved. Chief? Could you cite that uh, sentence that you're referring to about the commission? About the commission? Given that you are a member of the Board of Commissioners, I am providing an electronic copy of this demand to your colleagues on the board. It is my hope that the board further encourages your prompt compliance in order to avoid liability to the board for your def defamatory statements. That's the very last sentence of it. And that was the only part of it that I felt needed to be addressed by the board. Um, and I think we just need a consensus to give the chief um, authority to run this by Terry Lewis, which I, I think Terry got a copy of this when I was looking at who it went to. So I, I just do. feel that I don't think there's anything here, but I think that any time a lawyer um, sends us something like that and kind of insinuates that, that the board, because we're part of the board of commissioners, I think that we just need to at least make it public and address it. Well, Mr. Chairman, uh, I believe we became involved last month when statements were made right at this meeting. And it was up to us to either stop them then or, or, uh, or have proof that they actually exist, that, that these uh, accusations that were made last month uh, actually exist. And to date, that, that has not been presented to my understanding. But having said that, um, I believe that this should go to our attorney for review. Um, and the rest of this, as far as I'm concerned as a board member, is between the two parties involved and not the department or the, or the board. In the best interest of the district, um, Terry Lewis did receive this letter and he emailed me and uh, requested that I call him tomorrow regarding it. I haven't spoke with him since then. The only emails he asked was, should we discuss this? And I said, well, I have a board meeting tonight. And he requested that we at least speak about it tomorrow. That was it. So I don't have any other legal advice to offer the board at this point. Okay, that's all I have to say about it. Does anybody else have no, any? I agree with uh, having our, our lawyer. Let's just take a look at it. Okay, any other old business? We've got a few items under new business. Uh, policies and procedures. I think I'm gonna let the chief handle this part of it. Yes, gentlemen, the uh, policies, the, the first 
um, policy 183 and policy 481 are simply just changes in the numerical statute, state statute number. Um, the donation of leave policy, that has to do with um, the donation of leave from the employees. Um, and that issue came up because under our old policy, um, we were only allowed, the employees were only allowed to donate leave to each other under uh, major medical um, illnesses. However, the issue came up where, um, for example, when we have three pregnant ladies in the office, um, when they run out of time, or any other employee, when they run out of a time, they only get paid 66% of their salary. So other employees um, would like to have the ability to give their leave time to an employee to make up the remainder of their uh, paycheck so they get a full paycheck when they're off. Now this only takes place once the employee has exhausted all their leave and doesn't cost the district uh, any monetary uh, any monetary value whatsoever. It's just simply um, somebody donating their leave time to another employee. Do we need a motion to do this? Yes, sir. All under all one? All of them, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, entertain a motion to accept the new policies and procedures. I'll make a motion that we accept the new policies and procedures. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is the chief's report. I have nothing. Um, oh, we, we did skip the disposition report. Oh, uh, you're right. Need a motion for that as well. Need a motion for to accept the disposition report for September 2014. I'll make a motion that we accept the disposition report. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And you have nothing, Chief? No, sir. I'm going to turn it over to uh, Deputy Chief Giuliano. Hello, everybody. Can you answer? I've got a couple items here. <coughs> uh, the other day, I sent out a memo uh, thanking some of our firefighters for doing a good job of the call. And I'll read it here. Let me get that couple pictures here. I'll read it as I wrote it to the guys. A citizen stopped by and uh, wanted to thank you, Station 4 B shifters, for saving his life early Wednesday morning. He will be coming by on Thursday to thank you in person. He felt that he, uh, the care that you gave him saved his life. He's very appreciative of your skills and would like to thank you in person. I said, good job, fellas. I looked at the report in his sick person call a sick person call is just that, a sick person call. The guy may have the flu or he may have pneumonia, something like that. Um, the person may be experiencing flu-like symptoms or pneumonia and whatever. Anyway, this call may have seemed routine to some, but we all know this incident is anything but routine to someone who is experiencing an emergency and indeed may be a life-altering experience for them. Treating our citizens as family is what we do, and I'm happy to say there are those out there who appreciate your efforts. Thanks again for doing an outstanding job. Uh, this is gentlemen here when you see the picture roll by and these are some of our b-shift guys and the chief and uh, the female you see in the one picture outside is one of our medics uh, not our medics lee county medic angie she was on the call also uh, this gentleman felt certain that without our firefighter medics he would not have lived another day this call wasn't for a cardiac arrest or even what we consider a high priority call but to this gentleman it meant the world to have competent professional and compassionate firefighters show up at his doorstep in a matter of minutes and help him in his time of need. We treat all of our citizens as if they were family. If they call 911, it's because they're having an emergency, and to them, it's usually an extreme circumstance that requires professional assistance. I can't tell you how many times we get this sort of thank you from our citizens and how much it means to us. I always tell people that I was a carpenter for half my life and no one ever waved at me. But as a firefighter, I get people waving at me all the time and it makes me feel good. This reminds me of a story I sent to the newspaper several years ago when I was a battalion chief about a man and his wife. 
came into the station with a cake. He ran as a letter to the editor, and I'll read it to you. I would like to relate a story that happened today that reaffirmed my decision to become a firefighter 20-some years ago. We were working around the station. Lieutenant Wilkinson was calibrating our gas monitor for the hazmat truck, and Firefighter Harris was working on a report. I was setting the manning for the next duty day, and the rest of the crew was out in the station training. We got a visit from Mr. X. I can't tell you his name because of HIPAA laws. Uh, Mr. X brought us a beautiful cake that looked like it was professionally done from a bakery. The cake said, thank you, from Frank and Loretta. Mr. X said that he would like to personally give the cake to the firefighters who saved my life. Mr. X proceeded to tell us that he was having dinner last week when he felt some discomfort in his chest. At the urging from his wife, he went to his local fire department, and that was in North Naples, but at that time, uh, they, they advised him to come to Nina Springs because uh, they didn't have a heart monitor back in those days. Mr. X started to weep as he recalled how comfortable he was, I'm sorry, about how comforted he was by the care given by our firefighters, how professional they were and how concerned they were with his well-being. Mr. X was grateful that he was saved from another heart attack and his story and his tearful gratitude made me feel a little misty-eyed myself. As Mr. X relayed his thanks, I was thankful that I worked for a place that could give me the training and talent to be able to help people like Mr. X. We often get cakes and cookies and notes of thanks from those people whose lives we've touched. And we're always thankful for the thoughts. As a busy fire department, we sometimes forget just how doing what we're trained to do can affect so many lives. Speaking with Mr. X reminded me of my own aging father and I felt grateful for people who didn't think of themselves as anything special, but are trained, willing, and available to help anyone who needs it. From picking them up off the floor and placing them in their beds in the middle of the night to resuscitating them from cardiac arrest or anything in between. I thank God I work at a place that gives me the training and tools necessary to save lives and in an industry that can touch people in a way that makes them grateful enough to go so far out of their way. With a simple and beautiful gesture of bringing us a cake, Mr. and Mrs. X has reminded me why I became a firefighter in the first place. And while their gesture may seem trivial by some, it means a great deal to myself and my fellow firefighters. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. X. And I know Greg DeWitt was one of the firefighters that was there that day. Now lastly, could you hold that picture up for me? This is a picture painted by a young teenage girl who was in a terrible car accident on I-75 several years ago. The picture is of uh, I-75 at mile marker 118.4, where we found her broken body in trauma rest and brought her back to life. I don't remember all the details from the call, but I know that without our assistance, she would not have lived past that day. She was so grateful that she painted the, this reminder and wrote these beautiful words. True heroism is not the urge to suppress all others at whatever cost, but the urge to serve others at whatever cost. We hang this picture on the wall just outside the battalion chief's office, and for years now, I walk past this picture and remember how our guys make a difference in people's lives on a daily basis. There are some who think that what we do here in this fire department is ordinary. I think what we do here is extraordinary. And I'm very proud to be a part of it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Chief DeWitt? I have nothing. I have nothing tonight. 3444. I have nothing tonight. Commissioner's business. Commissioner Fitzgerald? No. Mr. Clerk? Mr. I have nothing. Mr. Cassell? I have nothing. Um, I have one public input card from Deborah McLean. I'm Deborah McLean, publisher of the Banana Peel. Um, Lee County has a history of being rife with aberrant behavior by uh, elected officials. And I hope that this has now been put to rest and the cease and desist order holds true. Um, I know I'm gonna have a copy of it and publish it in the Banana Peel. I think it's forthcoming. Thank you. Uh, we've got a couple of special dates coming up. Um, on September 11th uh, at 6 p.m. at the Lyles Hotel, Patriots Day Service. And uh, right here on the 25th of September at 501 for the final budget hearing. Other than that, um, motion to adjourn.
I move. Thank you.